As Putin threatens Armageddon, we learned that 20% of Congress members own stocks in the industries they're supposed to be regulating. How can we trust them on the precipice of a crisis? <laughs> Hello there, you 5.9 million awakening wonders. Thank you for joining me on this voyage towards truth, a truth that we must cultivate because those in power are leading us towards corruption and destruction. If you don't subscribe yet, subscribe right now. Turn on the notification bell. And remember, we are streaming live every single day, 5 p.m. UK, 12 p.m. EDT, 11 a.m. CT. But let's get into today's story. Now, this is an unusual time for the world. Putin threatens Armageddon. This is a time where you want to be able to rely on your leaders. This is a time when you want to know that Congress is populated with people with one thing on their mind, the preservation of civilization. Whether you're on the left or the right, the preservation of the American way. This is a time for a hero, a politician you can rely on, someone who means what they say and says what they mean, someone who represents a new, beautiful America of integrity, Someone like Obama, who was the very politician that promised that these loopholes would forever be closed, that insider trading would be a thing of the past. Don't take my word for it, though. Here he is saying it. Lately, I've been talking a lot about the, the choices facing this country. Straight away, it's nice to be reminded that Barack Obama doubtless has a degree of charm, assuredness, charisma. You can see why people were drawn to Barack Obama. I remember why I was drawn to Barack Obama. This is a president that represents new hope, new change. Those were the buzzwords, if not the policies. Here he is talking about something that we care about deeply on this channel, ensuring that politicians have one thing and one thing only on their minds, the well-being of the people they represent, that they're not distracted by corporate interests. Isn't that the number one challenge they're going to face? The titan of corporatism forever in their ear. They're going to need to stout moral souls to resist temptation. They certainly shouldn't own stocks and shares in the companies they're supposed to regulate. 20% of people in Congress currently do own stocks and shares. Do you think, let me know in the comments below, do you think that that biases the way they regulate those companies? The fact that they're personally, literally, financially invested in those companies? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know. Here, Barack Obama, and this is why so many people love him, introduced regulation to prevent that happening. The idea that everybody plays by the same rules is one of our most cherished American values. It goes hand in hand with our fundamental belief that hard work should pay off. Joe Biden actually does look different. He's actually deteriorated, isn't he? Like there, he looks sort of more together and he's under a lot less pressure. There, he looks like he would be able to get off that stage if you went, leave the stage now, Joe. He'd go, sure, off I go. What, where did, oh. Biden, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Biden? It's the notion that the powerful shouldn't get to create one set of rules for themselves and another set of rules for everybody else. That's Obama talking about the passing of the STOP Act, which is Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act. In 2013, Obama quietly signed legislation that rolled back a provision of the Stock Act that required high-ranking federal employees to disclose their financial information online. The emailed announcement was one sentence long. There was no fanfare when the Senate and then the House passed the bill in largely empty chambers using a fast-track procedure known as unanimous consent. That's how power works. And if we expect that to apply to our biggest corporations and to our most successful citizens, it certainly should apply to our elected officials, especially at a time when there's a deficit of trust between this city and the rest of the country. Well, it's not got any better. Uh, and that's why in my State of the Union, I asked members of the House and the Senate to send me a bill that bans insider trading by members of Congress, and I said that I would sign it right away. Well, today I'm... Leave the nose, Joe. Well, today I am happy to say that legislators from both parties have come together to do just that. The Stock Act makes it clear that if members of Congress use non-public non, uh, non information to gain an unfair advantage in, in, uh, in the market, then they are breaking the law. Nancy Pelosi. We were sent here to serve the American people and look out for their interests. Yep, that's the basics. I mean, this is what politics should look like, but the ceremony should have a relationship with reality. Ceremony should be the performance of a set of values 
that are real, rather the instantiation of an invisible idea. We can't sort of show you fairness, justice, but here's a ceremony. We're going to sign a bit of paper. We're going to tell you what it is, and then we're going to do it. But of course, it was repealed. The same act was quietly repealed in 2013. So when they're bringing it in, it's all can-can, legs kicking, lights flashing, da 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 fairness, justice. When they repeal it, nothing to see here. Out the front, look at me. Round the back, where'd she go? That's the nature of America. American politics. It's a performance and it remains a performance to this day. That is why, in spite of this act being passed in 2012 and repealed in 2013, you have 20% of current Congress members owning stocks and shares in the companies they're supposed to be regulating at a time that we've just come out of that pandemic. We've got a weird president that looks tired and confused all the time and don't know where the exit is. And during this time, it's acceptable for people in Congress to own stocks and shares in companies they regulate. How can you oppose the might of Putin if the might of Putin is what we oppose? How how can you oppose corporatism at all? How can you represent ordinary American people? The very things that are declared in that speech, how can that happen with these kind of stymieing inefficiencies? What we want you to observe on this channel is the difference between the performance of politics and the reality of politics. The fact that the things they say in public are the sort of things that should be happening kind of tells you that they know what they should be doing. They know what they should be doing. We were sent here to serve the American people and look out for their interests not to look out for our own interests. Don't bother. What? On my own interest? Oh shit, I hope he doesn't know about Hunter. We should make sure people who bundle campaign contributions for Congress can't lobby Congress and vice versa. That's that all dealt with. Luckily, lobbying's not a record highs. It is. The lobbying industry had a record year in 2021, taking 3.7 billion in revenue. Federal lobbyists are slated to spend in record numbers this year after lobbyists raked in $2 billion in the first two quarters of 2022 alone, an all-time high. Top lobbyists, all of which spent millions of dollars in quarter two, included corporate behemoths like Meta, Amazon, Pfizer and Pentagon contractor Lockheed Martin. So there we go. They say it because they know it's right, but they don't do it because they can't. In the industry, with the top spending in quarter one, the health sector, nearly half of the 3,130 lobbyists that were active last year were former government employees. If you've worked in government, you shouldn't be able to get a job in lobbying. These are actual regulations, legislation that could be passed. Why won't it be passed? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat. This spending pays off in major ways for deep pocketed interests. Between the 55 corporations that paid $0 in federal income taxes in 2020, for instance, the group spent a combined nearly $450 million in lobbying and campaign contributions since 2015, which translated into $12 billion in tax savings and rebates for the companies in 2020. I think we're beginning to see the mechanics of how politics truly works. I think we're beginning to see what would actually happen if money was taken out of politics. It would fall apart. You wouldn't have politics. It would be unrecognisable. It's like has been said of Britain. Without the monarchy, it's not Britain anymore. That's what defines Britain. You take dirty money out of politics in your country, in our country, probably in most places around the world, you wouldn't have a recognisable landscape. You wouldn't get the same people in it. You wouldn't get the same laws passed. You wouldn't get the same... It would change the world overnight. That's why they can never let it happen. We actually got what he actually wrote here. Change America forever. Fingers were crossed behind my back. Don't actually have to do anything. Reverse it all in one year. I love you very, very much. See you at Martha's Vineyard having one hella party. Yeah. Little did we know we were 10 years away from a president that you'd applaud if he could actually hold a pen. <laughs> Nearly 20% of Congress members, 49 Democrats and 44 Republicans, well, they're almost as bad as each other. They have been trading shares of companies in industries that they are supposed to be overseeing as part of their committee assignments, creating major conflicts of interest, a new report finds. Between 2019 and 2021, 97 US senators and Congress members or their immediate family made financial transactions in which they may have had access to inside information. Representative Bob Gibbs, Republican, Ohio, a member of the House Oversight Committee, reported buying and trading shares of pharmaceutical giant AbbVie in 2020. 2020 and 2021. At the same time, the committee was investigating the company and its rivals for unfair pricing practices. I don't know so much about Abby. I see it was a kind of a family firm. Which family? My family. And meanwhile, a total of 13 lawmakers traded shares of companies that were under investigation by committees they served on. What's the point of having a committee if the person investigating it has a vested interest in the outcome? Okay. You're our best man. Now, what the hell's going on at AbbVie? 
I like him. So no point. The wife of Representative Alan Lowenthal, Democrat, California, sold Boeing shares in March 2020, just a day before a committee her husband sat on released a bombshell report that alleged Boeing leadership was partly to blame for two 737 MAX crashes. Oh, and you thought... <laughs> And you thought I sold those Boeing shares because I had information that there was about to be a damning report revealing their culpability in some air crashes. I sold those shares to fund a surprise birthday party and you've just spoiled it. You're just like your father. Although what I will say about your father is he's very reliable when he sits on committees and he wouldn't be influenced by knowing that we own shares in Boeing. Phew. The most active traders were also those who may have had them. <laughs> The most active traders were those who may have had the most insider information. 44 of the 50 most active traders in Congress had conflicts of interest. So the ones who are doing it most are the ones that are most culpable, most likely to be guilty. There's not someone in Congress that, even though I don't know nothing about it, because I would never get involved, I just love stocks and shares, man. I trade stocks and shares for the love of it. I love my stock trading on the streets, man. I just do it like jazz. Boop, 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 boop. Buy. Boop, 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 boop. Sell. Boop, 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 boop. What's that? Boeing's planes keep crashing and it's their fault. Sell, sell, shit, sell. The analysis doesn't even capture all problematic trades. For instance, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's husband is famous for purchasing shares of companies like Amazon and Meta, which Pelosi is responsible for regulating. Oh. But since Pelosi doesn't sit on a committee, she was not included in the study. Nancy Pelosi is a reliable member of Congress, not some evil witch who would elbow a child just to get a nice photograph. Nancy Pelosi elbow this little girl during a photo op? Despite ongoing concerns about lawmakers' financial transactions, there is minimal regulation on stock trades. Because, like, it's not a bug, it's a feature. It's not a bug, it's a feature. You can't do that, otherwise there's no point in the whole system. Hey guys, we can't trade stocks and shares anymore. Oh, see you then, bye, see you. Everyone <laughs> just go. There's no point doing it. That's the reason. Hey guys, you can't get jobs anymore in companies that you used to regulate. Oh, guess what would happen? People would get involved in politics that genuinely cared about ordinary people. People that had no other motivation. You're a human, I'm a human. You know how difficult it is not to be like, oh God, my kid's in this football team, I want them to win. Or, oh, Oh shit, I'd make a few bucks here if I was like, we're human beings, we're fallible. The system has to change in order to elevate the best aspects of us and the best among us. Not to create a cesspit where the scum of the earth rise to the top. Under the Stock Act, which is the only legislation that reigns in lawmakers' trades. Oh, stop trading! Get the fuck off me with your Stock Act! I'm trying to trade! Well, you're meant to be in Congress. Piss off! Most members of Congress are still free to make trades that could conflict with their legislative duty as long as they disclose the information within 45 days, which many do not do. Okay, okay, well, listen, it is difficult. I understand it. I love trading myself. So if you are going to trade, will you at least tell us within 45 days that you did trade? No! The 2012 law was passed with bipartisan support. It's almost as if they're the same. In the wake of a stock trading scandal. Yet in the nearly 10 years since it was enacted, no one has been prosecuted under it, even as many members continue to conspicuously trade. Pointless legislation. Despite renewed chatter about the importance of cracking down on legislators' stock trades. Come on! We're chattering about it! High-ranking staffers say the likelihood Congress will actually regulate itself is so low, it's laughable. How low is it? Like... Like, the, God, that low? <laughs> That's too low. It's all performative. It's not going anywhere, one Senate staffer told the New York Post. Proponents of legislation that would ban members of Congress from trading stocks say that Democratic Party leaders are stalling on the bill. Though House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat California, claimed last week that lawmakers are finally ready to bring a bill to ban Congress from trading stocks to a vote by the end of this month, proponents of the ban are sceptical that that is the case, according to interviews with lawmakers. Here's what I predict. They might. They'll do a big ceremony about it. Joe Biden will sign something with a pen, probably quivering and shaking as he goes. Then a couple of months or a year later, they'll repeal it and no one will hear about it because it'll be some other thing in the news that they tell you now. Watch out for the monkeypox, kids. Some lawmakers think that the Democratic leaders could be delaying because they're personally against the plan. Representative Abigail Spanberger has speculated that Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer are simply trying to put the bill off long enough until efforts to pass it fizzle out. I think that they're trying to run out the clock, she said in May. That's the kind of thing that goes on, isn't it? It's just, oh, everyone will get bored of it in a minute, they'll get 
distracted. There'll be another war. There'll be something so terrible that happens. You just grind you down into a dust. You can't keep caring anymore. In the end, you just crack. It's hard to stay engaged. That's part of the point, to drain your will, to drain you of the ability to even imagine a better future. So potentially on the brink of Armageddon, you would think that what you would want would be a Congress full of righteous people that cared about ordinary people and the planet that we all live on. Instead, what it seems we have, at least in 20% of cases, is people that are motivated by self-interest, unwilling to introduce legislature that would in any way inhibit or curb that. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments and the chats. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Sign up to my mailing list. Join us over on Rumble where we stream every single day at five at these times. More important than any of that though, please stay free.